Greetings YouTube. A few times a year when I really feel as though I'm at a crossroads, I like to make a video basically just leaning on the community. You see, people think because I have a YouTube channel that that must mean like I'm great at the game. Hey, guess what? That doesn't mean anything. Uh, I can't tell you how many people I saw in, at New York City Comic Con last October during the uh, you have this this event where you can fight bosses and get tickets and qualify for the final day's event and and I just I stood there in awe half the time watching people uh, just play perfectly and I felt like the guy at the end of the bench in basketball who's like hey can I hold your towel uh, that'd be great so you know don't overestimate the idea that a YouTube channel somehow means I'm great at the game because I have never ever claimed that. But because of that, I normally feel as though my rank up decisions are a bit different than the person who's going to play perfectly with the best champions all the time. And I had a plan about rank ups that I was really, really excited about because I was planning on taking a couple of my best five star champs who I use every single week up to rank five and to max them out. And even though I know that Act 6 allegedly is going to have six star only paths, and I wouldn't be able to take these rank five five stars into certain chapters of Act 6, I didn't care because I wanted these champions at their best. It's also why, even though I realize for the sake of argument that some people you only need to have awakened once or maybe at SIG 40 versus SIG 200. I've never understood if you're going to have a champion in your roster that you bring into all the content that you use or most of the content that you use, why not have them at SIG 200 if they're a five star or SIG 99 as a four star? Why not have them at their very best, even if it doesn't make a monumental difference between SIG 200 and say SIG 40? So I say that to say that a 200 unit Cavalier Crystal changed the entire trajectory of this conversation, which is why I'm making this video. Because this champion, a champion that I used so poorly and so infrequently that I would rate my skills of playing Ghost traditionally at best at an F, suddenly I've got people messaging me, uh, some kind, sort of, but like jealous hate being like, you don't deserve a six star Ghost. I need a six-star ghost. You suck. And I'm like, I do. And if you see me with ghost, you'll probably want to murder me because I'm that bad. Now, I will say in my defense, I have been practicing with ghost slowly but surely. I would say I have upgraded my skills from an F to a D+. I'm better at phasing when I bring in Ant-Man and Wasp. I do enjoy, especially during that phasing period, having not only the enemy miss, but building up enough power to fire off the unblockable special. That's fun to me. I think that is fun in the same way that playing uh, with Quake has always been my favorite aspect of the game. And she will always remain. I don't see how it's possible for her to remain as anything besides my favorite character. I've put her in the quote unquote beyond God tier since the very beginning. And I'm so thankful Seton has finally come to his senses and stuck her where she belongs in that same tier. Because as the game has continued to evolve, her utility has only continued to go up, so much so that people have literally been banned uh, for playing too well with her in certain aspects of the game. So, I say that to say this. It's either six star ghosts for resources, or it's either taking up two of my rank four or five stars. And it's the heart versus the head strategy, right? The heart says, well, you know, you're basically going to do what you want. Screw it. You might have a YouTube channel, but it's your account. But the head says, well, if I become a, even a B player with Ghost someday, I'm going to be able to elevate my play and my damage output in a way that is going to clear so much content because so many people tell me that Ghost is a quote-unquote Swiss army knife that can beat almost any node, kind of like Quake, Except instead of Quake needing the longer fight duration, because the the problem with Quake, if there is one, is that she's never going to put out the kind of damage that Ghost can put out, or Stark Spidey, or any of the heavy hitters, uh, because that's not her role, right? That's not what makes her great. But Ghost is a player that uh, 
can really put out the top tier damage. So it's either take up Ghost or take up two of these champions. Particularly the champs that I was really thinking about were the two at the very top left. I have not beaten any of the Variant 1 content yet. And I thought if I beat Variant 2 100% and I got really lucky, I would get the Rank 4 to Rank 5 Mutant Gem, which would solve my dilemma because I could take up Ghost and still take Iceman to Rank 5, who I have so much respect for uh, Dorky Diggity Dave. And uh, Dork Lessons has told me that he loves his Rank 5 Iceman, and mine has been at Sig 200 for probably about a year now. And so, uh, yeah, I could take him up. As you can see, I could take him up right now. I could just accidentally hit that Rank Up button, and there is a Rank 5 Iceman. Uh, however, I will say that since I have been... Um, Letting myself use my six star domino more and just to take in red hulk because my my team just to give you a heads up right now For attack is normally domino red hulk who's just at rank three as a five star and then the holy trinity of ghost rider Stark spidey and blade so I used to take Iceman with hyperion as my fourth and my fifth options every single time But because I'm now taking in domino as variant two reminded me dude just do this have fun if you don't have like an unstunnable node, especially just parry and heavy and, and it's finally made me not fear fighting Korg in matches because I just parry and heavy Korg and somehow Korg is not incinerate immune and so even though he can shrug off that debuff sometimes it still is a much easier way to defeat Korg than any other champion that I have in my roster certainly better than someone like Blade or Stark Spidey but basically here's the dilemma I could take up Ghost and there goes my three tier five basic right there goes uh all of the resources I have of tier 5 basic at the moment or you know I, I can almost guarantee you that the same thing will happen as it did last year at least and that July 4th of uh, 2019 will give you the opportunity for multiple Odin purchases given it uh, which is why start hoarding for July 4th start saving all your iTunes credit or Google Play credit or or disposable income I, I can't tell people that enough because last year it literally cost about $500 worth of resources to get everything and of course you don't want to be actually pay that $500 but uh, regardless uh, I could take up Iceman and then I haven't really like I've heard nothing but great things about Captain America Infinity War and I also consider myself to be like a C minus player with this guy I just feel like I don't get the most out of him that I would if I was a better player with him uh, but I know that he is apparently a MVP in the first variant content which I do plan at some point on completing and so, you know, I could take him up to rank 5 too, or I could say screw it, and of course, my favorite champion of all time, I could take up Quake to rank 5, and yes, Quake doesn't need to be rank 5, but again, if they're your favorite champion, why wouldn't you want to have them at their best, especially as the game's PI continues to increase, because make no mistake about it, I do think by the end of Act 6, you're going to see PI that is similar to the same PI that you would see in, say, Labyrinth of Legends, right? You're going to see 100,000-plus rated enemies instead of 40,000-plus rated enemies. And, uh, and so, yeah, I have an inventory that looks as follows for both my Catalysts and my Tier 2 Alphas. I have as close to three fully formed Tier 5 basic Catalysts as I can get. In fact, once I get the glory from today's final uh, Day 5 completed Alliance quest, I could probably have enough glory to finish off the tier 5 basic catalyst fragments that I need for that third fully formed, which of course is exactly how many I need to take up 6 star ghost to rank 2. Uh, and then I have enough uh, tier 2 alphas, 11 out of 12 currently in my inventory, to not even worry about the tier 2 alphas. I think you need, what, 7 to take up a 6 star to rank 2, and I have 11. So, yeah, I... Um, I just have to ask myself this question because I ask people who are, again, much smarter than I am at this game. Uh, I have to ask them, like, how often do you use Ghost? Because some people are like, Ghost is super fun to play. I'm so jealous. And then I ask him, like, well, how often do you use her? Oh, you know, occasionally. And I'm like, really? Like, oh, it's so many resources just kind of occasionally. And, of course, for, like, the Panda Man Pete's out there who are gods with this champion, use them with everything. I don't know if I ever expect myself to even be half a Panda Man Pete, if that's even quantifiable. Like, I just don't think I'm going to be able to, to utilize her. And I think it also gives me pause because I do believe I will never be a good enough Ghost player to where I wouldn't feel comfortable bringing this champion into high-level content without at least 
Wasp, and Ant-Man. And so I'm taking up three out of five of my roster spots in order to do that. And I know that Ant-Man hits like a quote-unquote truck with that synergy, and Wasp certainly gets better. But you compare how excited I would be to hit with Ant-Man versus Blade and Stark Spidey or Hyperion, and even for Utility Iceman uh, or Void, uh, you know, and it's it's a joke. It's 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 no contest. So I um I don't know YouTube. I'm I'm stuck. But when I am stuck, I do not rely on my own sense of ego or overconfidence in this game. I rely on the many members of the community who maybe they don't have YouTube channels, but they're great human beings, and they will always be more knowledgeable about certain champions, especially the aforementioned in front of you ghost than I am. So here's the dilemma. I mean, that's going to be the thumbnail. It's going to be the title of this video. It's it's rank two six-star ghost or rank up multiple five-star champs. That's a really long title, so maybe I'll find a way to shorten it. But that's essentially what this video is all about. I've laid out my roster in front of you. By the way, if uh, somebody says take up vision instead, I can say if you missed the video with happiness, that uh, I do have that rank up gym, which has finally been fixed, right? The new patch update. I, I, I'm going to go off on a separate video as I got wrecked in dungeons last night. Is how they, they fixed the, the rank up, but they still haven't fixed the special three bug that causes you to dash into your opponent uh, after a special three occasionally. But uh, yeah, I, and, and to close, because I told myself I would cover this and then I forgot it. Star Lord also will probably always stay with rank four, but. This champion got me through so much content back in the day. I would not have ever cleared Labyrinth of Legends without him. I would not have cleared Act 5 without him. And yet, you know, I've literally been told by the people who I look at as like the popular people at the table, right? The, the smart people. And I'm just kind of sitting there with my apple being like, well, I'm kind of here. Should I go play basketball at recess in the corner? Uh, people are like, you'd be an idiot to ever take Star-Lord to rank 5. He has no utility, blah, blah, blah. And I think, well, I loved playing with that champion. I still love playing with Star-Lord. Uh, and so, like, I'm sitting here and I'm hearing the quote-unquote logical arguments about taking up champs like Ghost that I suck with and never play with, and then I hear those same people saying, you know, you'd be an idiot to take up Star-Lord or Quake or, or even Iceman, and I'm like, but I love those champions. So, it's the heart versus the head, YouTube. I don't know if that makes sense, and maybe there are going to be people who listen to that and be like, well, you know, if you were a better player, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about this, but, you know, I am who I am. I, uh, I still play this game uh, casually, and I still view myself as definitely more closer to the average player than the elite master or platinum level alliance player. That's fine. I've accepted that in life, but that's why these videos are so helpful for me. And that's why the comment section of this video will really, truly be helpful. I'll read every comment and I'll take your feedback into consideration. Same with the line app. So thanks for watching this video, YouTube. Thanks for uh, supporting my channel and helping me with rank up advice. I look forward to seeing all of the feedback and sort of making an educated decision. Maybe this week, maybe next week, maybe next month, who knows, but uh, definitely don't want to use those resources until I'm 100% sure I'm making the right decision, which is why your feedback is so crucial. Thanks for watching YouTube.